All right, let's say that hypothetically an attacker has just compromised your cloud infrastructure. Now, does that mean that the attacker has full control over everything at this point? They can destroy everything, they can exfiltrate anything they want? Or do you have enough security controls in place that would limit the scope and impact of this initial compromise and not let them escalate their privileges from that point? That's the question that we help our clients answer when we perform cloud penetration tests at Bishop Fox. And that's why Carlos Vendramini and I created CloudFox. Because unlike real attackers, penetration testers have an advantage. We can use a white box approach and query the cloud provider APIs to get a lot of information about the assessed cloud environments. And that allows us to identify high impact attack paths in less time. And so I'd like to show you a few examples of how we would use CloudFox in a penetration test and then pass it over to Carlos. In this first example, we're going to help our fictitious client answer the question, are there any unintended privilege escalation paths available to interns? They're supposed to have very limited read-only access to the environment. And to do that, we're going to use two profiles. So the first is an AWS SSO role for the interns that we'll ha we have configured in the interns profile. And then the second is the read-only access that we have in the CloudFox of the CF exec profile. So to give you an example of what the interns can't do, let's see if they can list all the buckets in the account. So they can't. So now the interns might think that they don't have access to S3 at all, but we'll find out that actually they do. And one way we can do that is using CloudFox and the, the CF exec profile, and then the permissions command. And we're specifically asking, does this principle, what permissions does this principle have? And what we can see is that they have describe EC2 instances, they have a couple of Lambda list functions, some IAM list, and a S3 get object as well. Now this still appears to be read-only access. Well, they have get object and list buckets, so they can, if they know the name of a bucket, they can list the objects and get the objects in that bucket. So now the question is, is there anything sensitive in any of those buckets? So let's use CloudFox's buckets command and what you'll see here is five buckets. Now you might ask yourself, well, I could have just used the AWS S3 LS command for this. Why do I need CloudFox? And the answer is in loot file. So CloudFox has created this loot file for us and we can cat this out. And for each of the buckets, it's given us the commands to either recursively list all the file names, which is right here, or we can make a local directory and copy the entire bucket contents. And the reason we want to list the files recursively first is because some buckets can be quite big and we don't want this to be an automated process. So this bucket here that I'm looking at is the one of interest for me, right? This is the Terraform state file. Maybe it's empty, maybe it's not. And I've already exported the profile of interns. And now what I'm going to do is as the interns, I'm going to recursively read all of the contents of this bucket. And I see a bunch of Terraform state files for different environments. And now I'm going to use the CloudFox loot file to make the local directory and now to copy all of the files recursively to my local file system. Now at this point, I'm going to look particularly at the prod Terraform state file. I'm going to search for a AKIA and I see that the user Pele has their, their key, their ID and their secret key in this Terraform state file. And so now I've escalated to the, per, the permissions of Pele and we would use the permissions module again and that would tell us that Pele is the administrator. So that's just one example of how to use CloudFox on a penetration test. And for the next example, I'm gonna pass it over to Carlos Vendramini, who will run CloudFox against one of the scenarios in Rhino Security's excellent CloudGoat project to show another use case. Over to you, Carlos. Thank you, Seth. We're gonna use the ECS EFS CloudGoat scenario to mock our cloud penetration test and demonstrate how CloudFox works. The objective is to mount an elastic file system and obtain the flag. 
the starting point is an EC2 instance. It is actually quite similar to assessing the impact of a compromised application, which is a common scenario we test for our clients here at Bishop Fox. As we do in our cloud pen tests, we always request read credentials. This allows us to use our white box approach and identify attack paths linking our starting point to our final objective. The Cloud Go DFS challenge is an excellent one that teaches how to deploy ECS workloads, how to use SSM, and ultimately gets you on an EC2 instance capable of mounting an elastic file system with the flag. But when using CloudFox with our read-only access, we are going to demonstrate how we can skip some of these steps to get to the objective. We have a read profile here defined for a cloud user, which we are going to use to run CloudFox. We will run the tool with the all checks command to perform all relevant security checks that we have programmed. After CloudFox finishes, several output files are created. The inventory.txt file will list some common services present in the account. We can see that services such as EC2, ECS, and Lambda are in use. The file systems.txt file contains all mount mountable elastic file systems, including our objective. Notice that the EFS policy does not require IAM authentication, so we should be able to mount the file system directly from our initial virtual machine. In addition, the file systems mount commands.txt file provides the necessary commands that we need to use to mount the file system and access the flag. For the full documentation on our functionalities, please refer to our GitHub wiki. We hope you enjoy CloudFox and happy hunting.